Uh, there were two occupants on board the gyrocopter and tragically both were fatally injured. The preliminary information that I have at this time is that at 2.30 in the afternoon, the helicopter or the gyrocopter was issued a, a fuel receipt for purchase of fuel. And uh, shortly thereafter, at 2.46 in the afternoon, again, this is preliminary information, but a Mayday call was recorded on the local Sebring uh, Regional Airport, I believe it is, uh, common traffic advisory frequency. There were, there were no exchanges over the radio, but uh, it's believed that the Mayday call did come from the accident uh, gyro cop. Uh, there, there's some radar data, but I don't have the, uh, I don't have any fidelity on that. I don't have any information about at what altitude uh, the gyrocopter was flying, and I, and I can't, I can't match at what altitude the gyrocopter was at the time that the Mayday call was recorded. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, is document the crash site. Unfortunately, there was a significant fire post crash and a great deal of the physical evidence that we would examine is destroyed or it's, it's just not even there to examine anymore. The fire completely consumed it. Um, what I hope to do is remove the wreckage today. You can see part of that process beginning behind us. Um, and I'm going to take the engine to a facility on the Sebring Airport where they actually uh, specialize in the maintenance of the uh, engines that are installed in this particular gyrocopter. So, so that manufacturer of engines is actually something they specialize in. So I'm hoping that they can give me some uh, information about the engine. I, I don't have a great deal of uh, confidence that that's going to occur based on the fire damage that I've witnessed here at the scene. Um, the process going forward is essentially the same as we do in all general aviation accidents. We're, we're going to look at the man, the machine, and the environment. The pilot, as I understand it, um, he's, a, uh, he's an experienced gyrocopter pilot. He's, he's a commercial pilot. He has a, a rotorcraft and gyrocopter rating. Um, a, a recent medical certificate was issued to him. The uh, passenger on board is also a uh, rated pilot, a certificated pilot. We'll be looking at his um, background as well. We're going to look at total experience, recency of experience, recent training, all those sorts of things. Uh, we'll get information on uh, the occupants from the from the medical examiner and uh, toxicology. Uh, Testing will be done by the FAA in Oklahoma City. The samples will be taken by the, the local coroner or medical examiner, and they'll be uh, transferred to Oklahoma City where those labs will conduct the toxicology. Now, the, the local uh, authorities, possibly the state, I, I don't know what the laws are in the state of Florida, they may do their own toxicology as well. It's perfectly routine, it's what we do every single time. Uh, the machine, we're gonna look at it uh, in place. I've, I've, essentially completed my exam here because there's just not a lot to look at. We're going to go into detail with the engine tomorrow. Um, we're still in the process of trying to locate maintenance records. Uh, I've got some excerpts. I've got photographs of excerpts of the maintenance records, but the physical records, I don't know where they are, and they may have been on board the, the gyrocopter, and they may have been destroyed in the fire. My understanding is that the gyrocopter was being moved from uh, Sebring down to Deland, Florida to be uh, displayed in an air show down there and uh, possibly sold there. It was being marketed for sale. I don't know the fine details of that, but that was my understanding. Um, the weather, um, you know, I'll, I'll get that. I don't know what the, the local weather was at the time. Uh, but of course that will be looked at as well, the air traffic environment, but I understand you know, it's an uncontrolled field and this is probably uh, uncontrolled airspace, so he was probably uh, free to fly about 
um, as he was doing on his way to, to land. Um, the entire process, to your question, um, based on the chronology of events that I'm already investigating and accidents that will be assigned to me in the future um, and any work that I, I'll need done from headquarters specialists, the whole process typically takes about a year. You said there's a terrible fire here. There was, so does that mean that this is going to be a more difficult investigation and could we never have an answer as a result of this fire? That's several questions. Uh, yes, the fire was significant. The, uh, my understanding is the gyrocopter holds 26 gallons of fuel. And, um, and my understanding too is that the, the gyrocopter was, was topped off. So it was only a few minutes between uh, a full servicing of the fuel system and the accident. So, that, so you had that, that fuel that was brought to the accident site and then the fuel of however this home was constructed. I don't know if there were propane tanks involved or, or any paints or thinners or anything stored, but the fire that the gyrocopter experienced once it arrived here was significant and sustained. So there's, there's, um, there, there are a couple of identifiable major components, but beyond that, everything in between is essentially gone. We heard a different story about where he was going. What we heard, from somebody at the airport was that he picked up the doctor, the doctor had dropped off his gyrocopter to be fixed, and he had to take the doctor, or he was going to take the doctor just because he's a good guy, back to Manatee County. So I'm wondering, that could be true, as well as this gyrocopter may have eventually been going to the land. Yes, that, 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 that scenario inside. is possible. I, I, uh, again, the information that I have is, is preliminary, and, um, you know, beyond what happened here, the the itinerary is, is is really unimportant to me. I mean, it 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 is to understand, you know, what were they doing, what, what did they intend to do, um, but I at this point I, I yeah. don't know. I can't confirm or or, or deny those stories. Yeah. I, I I simply don't know. I mean, they both could die. At this, this oh yes, I mean it's going there yeah. His ultimate destination, my understanding, it was yeah. Deland. So if he was giving this gentleman a ride um, back home, sure, uh, that's entirely possible. I'm done. Good. Is there a percentage you would say of what is left there? I know you, you said not much, but is there a percentage? Well, all I'm going to say is a small percentage. See, I'm not familiar with this particular crap. I've seen photographs of it. Um, but what its gross weight is, what its construction is, how much of it is, you know, metal, how much is composite, how much is uh, plastic, uh, I have no idea. But basically what, what I'm looking at is the, uh, the rotor head the controls attached to the rotor head. The rotor blades are still attached, but one is significantly deformed. How much of that is by impact? How much of that was um, as the result of heat and the way it rested and then you know, came to rest during the fire in the heat? I don't know, I'm not a metallurgist. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. And then the engine itself, the case is there. Um, I can see a couple of the cylinders, a couple of the other cylinders are, are buried in material that's either home structure or part of the gyrocopter. I can't tell the difference because it's all just, you know, burnt down to, to ash, really. So, um, I, you know, two major components, the engine and the rotor head. Everything in between, what percentage is that? I, I don't know. Did you say you took the engine out or are you going to do that tomorrow? Now the engine's coming out today, okay. and we're going to do the examination over at the Sebring Airport. I've got a facility over there that specializes. This is a Rotax-powered aircraft, and uh, this facility over here specializes in Rotax maintenance. So they're going to be able to tell me what it is that I'm looking at. I have a general understanding, but um, I'm not a uh, subject matter expert. The Mayday call. Are there any subject matter on Mayday call that would indicate what sort of problem they were having? I, the short answer is no. 
the, uh, the truthful answer is, I don't know. But uh, from my understanding, it was... simply a mayday call in the clear on the common traffic frequency for the Sebring Airport, but I don't think there was any uh, detailed information about what emergency they were faced with. And this was not picked up by 911 or anyone else in the area? No, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been monitoring that frequency. And you all consider gyrocopters to be experimental aircraft, so how do you categorize them? Well, the FAA would have to, to answer that. They, the FAA um, issues their worthiness certificates for individual aircraft, whether they're manufactured by a, a known company and they, they meet certain production requirements, or whether it's built from a kit by the owner. And then if it's built from a kit by the owner, then he or she is the manufacturer. But how all that is, is spliced and how the FAA determines that, I, I'm not qualified to answer that question. But, but they can tell you uh, what it takes to uh, build an experimental aircraft or register an experimental aircraft. Sometimes antique military airplanes are registered in the experimental category. So how that all breaks out, I really don't know.